Hey everyone, this is George Karos, and what you're going to hear today is a highlight video of some of my favorite lessons I've learned from my podcast. Uh, you'll hear some of the great stories, uh, ideas, thoughts from my guests over this last year. And there's going to be four of these videos um, in the month of December, kind of talking about this. And you know, before we even get into it, I just want to share you know four of the lessons that I've learned. Um, from this podcast this year. And I'm going to share them each week. And I think uh, the first one I'm going to share is gratitude and how much gratitude has really helped me through this year, has helped me through this. And the gratitude I have for people who take their time out of their very busy schedules to sit down and just have a conversation. Uh, the gratitude that I have that we are in a space that we can actually learn um basically anytime, anywhere from people that we admire, people that we don't know, people that we want to know and connect that. But just having that gratitude um, to help us better help other others. I think for me, I can get into a space where I constantly focus on what I don't have, uh, what I'm lacking, where I need to grow. And I, like, I think a lot of times people kind of get gratitude mixed up with this notion of like false positivity. But I think it's really kind of looking at trying to find those things in our lives to be thankful for so we can better help others. And it doesn't mean that we um, we don't have tough times, we don't have tough moments, but it's really trying to focus on, you know, what can we appreciate in our lives? And that's one of the lessons I learned this year from this podcast and kind of connecting to that. And so really the gratitude that I have for the guests, that's one of my lessons. Um, I just want to share with you really quickly as you get into these highlight videos. And I will also say I have gratitude that you're here to listen because there's a million places you could be right now. Uh, it's probably really busy, busiest, uh, <laughs> December's, I was going to say it's the busiest time of the year. Um, but really all every month is the busiest time of the year <laughs> for education. So, um, I really appreciate that you're here. Thanks for all you do. I hope you enjoy this compilation video. Some of the highlights, um, from the Innovators mindset podcast in 2021. Thanks. It's kind of interesting um, to think about how many students maybe walk out of schools and don't have that knowledge. And so, like, like, I like what what actually got you interested in in some of that stuff. And you know, like I said, you you share it. Like you you share. It. I I actually saw like some of the ups and downs you were sharing too with investing. And so like, what what got you interested in that in the first place? Oh man, I have to say, what really turned me on to it, and it, these two events happen approximately the same time. I'm gonna date myself, like for real, for real. Um, there was an episode of Say by the Bell that came out where <laughs> Zach Morris like bought some stuff yeah, on margin. I'm gonna stop you. I that okay. is, that is not what I expected. <laughs> How did you get in financial literacy? Well, there's this episode of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> oh, well, of course. Isn't that how everybody gets it through it? You learn about potatoes. Sure. And, no. I you. I'm like, what? Saved by the bell? Okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So that that's when I like first really started thinking about it. And around the same time, I was in maybe no a few years later in eighth grade. Then I remember that we um, in civics class had like a unit on investing. And so I started, you know, started thinking about it. I didn't really do a whole lot with it. Um, and it's, it's really wild because now that we're talking about blogs, I went back to my very first blog in like 2003, where I was like, you know, thinking I was going to be Beyonce, but not. <laughs> um, and I did like a music blog mm -hmm. and on it, I was just like, oh, I want to get into stocks. And this was like 2003. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, I, I just saw this like about two weeks ago. It blew my mind. But um, I started um, investing through my job through a 403B program. Um, and then, you know, the apps started coming along, the investing apps, and I started getting into those probably around like 2013-ish, but I started going really hardcore around 2017, um, you know, after talking to a few friends, um, Dr. Tatul and Toya, huge shout out to him. He sat me down and schooled me about the Robinhood app, and I was just like, ooh. So, you know, I really started getting into it, and I, I went like all in. Um, I would say about maybe May of this year. Mm -hmm. And this is this is probably really stupid advice. So I would uh, recommend that anyone listening to this don't follow, but I'll share. Um, 
I actually took out a uh, a loan against my 403B from work mm-hmm. because I saw that it had dropped like tremendously. And I was just like, you know what? My returns are better than this. So let me just mm-hmm. go ahead and take out a loan on this. And um, so I took out a loan, started trading it and uh, decimated it. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but I ended up making like, I ended up breaking even for the most part, but um, you know, right now just trying to learn from those, uh, those early mistakes trading. And um, you know, I'm good with the investing with letting the money sit there and, and, and grow, but uh, trying to learn trading and making those fast trades. Like I'm the wolf of wall street. didn't work yeah. out as easy as it looked at first. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, that's yeah. a tough thing to do. Like I actually, I, I invest, but I like, even though I do stocks, I do it long term, Right. And so, yeah. yeah. So you got to kind of be with the ups and downs of that too. Right. But yeah, it's yeah. good. And this is, this is why I appreciate you because it could be easy. You share a lot of stuff. You've had success with it, but you share like, Hey, like you say, this didn't work. And I think that's, yeah. that's a part of the process. Right. I got to yeah. Now I got to share this with you. Okay. <laughs> so I actually, I don't know. I can't believe that you brought up saved by the bell. Did you see the saved by the bell? Uh, like the unauthorized, Saved by the yes. Bell. Did you see it? Yes, I did. I did. So it was just on TV one night, and I was like, this, "Like it was like a Lifetime, right? It wasn't like a. Big, <laughs> is that the one you watched? Like it was like I don't know if it was Lifetime, but it was like a yeah, Lifetime like yeah. channel, right? And I think like, I think that's the one I saw too. Yeah, with the I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Yes. Do you remember that part? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what did, did you see that? I actually was. I was like, I'm not watching this stupid thing, and then. Two hours later, <laughs> like that was amazing. Was like, oh my gosh! Did you, you yes. Watch? What'd you think? Yeah, yeah. You know, honestly, I don't remember too much of it, but I do remember reading uh, Dustin Diamond's book where he wrote like the tell all about <laughs> Say by the Bell, and it was just oh my gosh, that was insane. Okay, so I gotta I ask you this question. Up. Do you so like were you in school when Say by the Bell was out? Yeah, yeah, like um it, i think it came out in 89 so i was like eight i want to say yeah, yeah i was like eight when it came out and then by the time it went off the air i think i was like in middle school or just getting into high school or something like that and isn't there like some reunion coming out with this with say by the bell yes it's on um <laughs> it's on nbc not that, Peak not that i'm streaming. interested not that i'm interested yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's streaming now. They have their new episodes. I haven't caught them yet, but no, seriously. Yeah, yeah, oh, NBC Peacock app. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah the, the um, it, it is interesting to kind of see that there. I, I wonder, like, I, the reason I asked you is I'm trying to think because I actually watched Save with the Bell, but I think I was like, a, I can't remember how old I was. I, I swear that I was a teacher when I watched this. I don't think I was a kid, but maybe I was like, it's so like, I got to look up when that came out, but I, I actually have, um, I, like, I love watching like high school shows and stuff like that. Cause you, <laughs> you relate to it as a teacher, right? But you're watching like student drama and things like that. Did you, <laughs> you know this show? So if you like save with the bell. Do you know the show Degrassi? Do you know this? It's a, Canadian Oh, show. I've heard of Degrassi. Drake was on there, right? That's where you got to start. <laughs> yes, that was like so they actually I, I remember um I remember watching it when Drake was on, but I can't re- I like I cannot remember his name for the life of me right now. Like his actual name. I don't I it's Aubrey, Aubrey. Aubrey uh yeah. so he was on and he was like I, they had like there's this is such a there's like an old show and whatever and they like had this band, it was like terrible <laughs> music and you're kinda of laughing. And so they kind of like redid it, but now it's like, uh, his name was Jimmy Brooks and he's like a rapper. And I'm okay. like, oh, this is like terrible. Like such, oh, you know, no. terrible, but I want to watch it. Cause you know, it's <laughs> exactly, especially like it's Canadian television. And then, <sighs> and then if you watch it, like, and then, and then somebody's like, Hey, like, have you heard of this Drake guy? I'm like, I'm like, who's Drake? And they show me, I'm like, that's the kid from Degrassi. What? He's like a <laughs> rapper. And then I like went back and watched like old rap clips. I'm like, it's actually pretty good. Like it was actually yeah. <laughs> the, the school year, obviously crazy. Right. And this is, this is being uh, recorded in 20 at the end of 2020, but you're going to, you're watching this in 2021 and UDL to a lot of people seems like this um, really kind of far out 
uh, it's only for certain schools and maybe even certain classrooms. Like a lot of people have that perception of it. And I think it's really can be done in any school, any situation. And, but then you have remote learning, you have hybrid learning, you have, um, you know, face-to-face -face learning with literal dividers in between children, right? And you have that. So when you take the concept of universal design for learning and you actually apply it to like a really kind of flexible learning landscape, and you, that's a term that um, you and Catlin and I were talking about yesterday that you, you two had brought up. Um, how do you see UDL in a time where there's so much just craziness and uncertainty of like even the environment that we're going to be teaching in? So a lot of people think of UDL as like something you do as a, like a list of strategies. And it's far more about like a set of beliefs or a set of principles. And with UDL, there's like three kind of core principles that have never changed. So universal design for learning has been around for 30, almost 40 years. And during that time, the strategies have continually evolved. Um, you know, the technologies have evolved, the strategies have evolved, um, just as the evidence base gets bigger and we learn more about the importance of, you know, critical thinking and the innovator's mindset. Um, what has never changed is the core belief. Um, and that is number one, that we have to embrace this concept of variability, that like people aren't static. Like they need different things at different times. And the traditional model of education was really focused on like, once you know a learner, you know what they need. Mm -hmm. And you can like slap a label on them like a price tag and then you'll know about them. And so like a really concrete example is like, you would say, I'm a strong reader. You could hand me a piece of text, I could read it. Um, but if I don't have my contacts in, I can't read it. And if I have a migraine, I can't read it. And that just shows like learning is contextual. And so when we embrace the concept that not only are learners different from each other, but they're actually very different day to day based on their mood, we have to design something where learners get to create their own environment. That's the first thing is like, we can't possibly know what everybody needs more than they know that themselves. So number one is like just this concept of variability means we can't possibly ask everybody to do something in the same way at the same time. Um, the next is this concept of like really firm goals and flexible means. So like, what is it that we actually want students to know and do? And let's strip all the crap away from that. Like all the things that are standardized, all the things that are one size fits all, because we have like these really, really open standards. Like students will explain the causes of the civil war, for example. And then it's like, you got to read this chapter of the textbook. You got to take this right. multiple choice test. You have no idea if kids can explain the causes of the civil war, if that's the goal. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be really flexible about like, what really is the goal? And then based on variability, how do we provide like multiple pathways for, these are all the ways you can learn about the cause of the civil war. Here's materials that you can use if you get stuck. Here's materials you can use if you want an extra challenge. Here's all the ways you can share what you know. And that requires all those pieces of that innovator's mindset, which is like, I have to be reflective, you know, I have to be self-directed, you know, all of that work. And then the third belief is that there's value in expert learning. There's value in putting the learner in the driver's seat to make those choices. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very different model because like in a traditional setting, it's like, I am in charge. I look at the goals. I decide how everyone's going to learn it, the materials they need and how they're going to share what they know but that doesn't embrace variability. It doesn't build expert learning. And it's not the only way to meet the goals that we're required to build. One of the things I think is the most important thing for a, a, a leader, doesn't matter if it's education, political, uh, whatever it might be, corporate, mm -hmm. the number one thing for leaders to do is to maintain a high level of integrity. To maintain, and now here's my definition of integrity, okay? Because I truly believe everyone in the world has integrity. Everyone. It's just a matter of if it's high integrity, or if it's low integrity, everybody has, you know, where do you fit on the continuum? Now, my definition of integrity is a set of beliefs, values, and actions that other people can depend on. It's not mm -hmm. about what you can depend on, it's what other people can depend on. That's what integrity is. Beliefs, values, and then you take those beliefs and values, you put them into action, and other people can depend on it. All right, mm -hmm. quick, quick example. Um, do you know somebody who's always late? Everybody knows somebody who's always late, right? 
right. if you believe value in action, you can depend on. I can depend on the fact that you're going to be late. Same thing, you know, something's coming up. Oh, where's he at? Oh, trust me, he'll be late. Really? What do you think? Oh, I know. True enough. There you go. He's late. Then you have somebody else who always on time, right? Have an event coming on. Oh, I hope he's on time. Don't worry. He'll be on time. You get there. He's already there before everybody else setting up, putting chairs out. Boom. Belief, values, and action that others can depend on. Now. Awesome. So if you have belief, values, and action that others can depend on, and you're given, you're given a speech, you're explaining to everybody what it is that you have to do, you have to back that up. You have to make those things happen. And if you don't, that cuts into that, that level of integrity. And people, leaders, you don't get integrity right away. Integrity happens over time because it's the beliefs, values, and action that other people can depend on. You can't depend on anything if it happens one time. You can only depend on something if it's been happening over time. And there's four things I believe that you can do to maintain your high level of integrity. Number one, keep your promises. If you have a promise, you keep that promise. Promises are your big events, big, uh, big units, big, big uh, projects. All right. Keep your promise. If it, something gets in the way of it, you make it up. Number two, speak up for what you believe in. If you believe in something as a leader, you got to say something because they're watching mm-hmm. everything that you say, listen, everything that you say, and they're listening to everything that you don't say. You need to say something, even if it goes against the grain of everybody else, there's a right way to speak up and there's a wrong way to speak up. We all know that in the world right now, right? There's a right Mm -hmm. way and a wrong way to speak up. You speak up properly and you, you stick by what you say. That means something. Number three, be fair when making decisions. Oh, if you know, you know, some leaders, they're looking out for self, what I get, what I get, what I get, what my company gets, what I, what is fair, what is the most fair way to get the outcomes that are necessary for everything, the win-win situation. And the fourth thing, which is the last thing, which is probably to me the most important is do what you say you're going to do, which is different than keeping your promises. Promises are your big events, big situations, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do what you say you're going to do are your daily tasks. You say you're going to be there at two o'clock, be there at two o'clock. You say you're going to email them, email them. You say you're going to follow up, follow up. You say you're going to look into it, look into it. So again, you have a leader who's saying all these things. My thing is this. Are you, if, would you have high integrity if you are keeping your promises all the time, you're always speaking up for what's important, you are being fair with every decision that you make, and you do what you say you're going to do consistently, where's your level of integrity? Here. Therefore, you get the type of people that you can say, I'll follow her. I'll, mm-hmm. Her level of integrity is there. Whereas other people, because the moment that you don't do one of those things, your integrity goes down. Your integrity goes down. No matter what it is that you do, they're going to remember that one time that you didn't and that integrity starts slipping. That's the difference. I feel so blessed to have so many opportunities and I, I, I see people as gifts to me, right? Relationships mm-hmm. are gifts to me, you know, students are gifts to me, the day is a gift to me. And so when, when, I, when I have interactions with people, I want to reach out. And so a lot of times I reach out to people and say, hey, I listened to your podcast and this is what resonated with me. So, and thank you for sharing. Thank you for amplifying people's voices. And through that, I just met more and more people. Uh, Teach Better also has an admin mastermind. So I've been part of that for the last few months, uh, every, every, every Tuesday, and met an, a lot of new people. And, uh, you know, it just, it's like the more you have of something, the more you want of it because it, it fills my soul. It fills mm-hmm. my brain. And even being a new head teacher, I feel like I am more equipped in a sense because I've listened to all the stories of all these other administrators who have had different issues brought up. And it's almost like, it's almost like we, we come to our admin mastermind group and somebody shares an issue and then everybody just kind of wraps their arms around them and says, well, here's what you right. can try or right. here's what you can try. And then you just go back and, and you know, you, you try it. And it's through listening to their stories and their advice that I feel like I've learned so much from all those conversations. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I have, I, it was interesting because just the other day I was having a conversation with her two custodians and one of them was saying, you know, oh, it's so hard on Zoom. You just can't have connections, you know, that way. And I said, mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry, but I actually disagree with you. Because in the last few months, I have made so, like, I have so many phenomenal friends and such deep relationships with people that I've never met. And these are, like, real deep 
relationships that are, are even closer than the, the relationships that I have with people on staff, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we've had we've had deaths, miscarriages, all all these things, and I feel like because we're part of this connected community, we are supporting each other, especially through the pandemic, right? There's so many times that people are struggling with things, um, you know, uh, emotional and mental health, and we just kind of wrap our arms around each other and support each other. And I, I think it's, you know, all in a lot of my circles, we feel the same way that when we became a connected educator, it changed our lives. And we have now so many more people we can lean on. You know, we, we can reach people through DM on Twitter or through Voxer or, you know, Facebook Messenger, or there's just so many opportunities for us to learn from each other and to lean on each other. And, you know, I'll say it, I, I say it often, but uh, a year ago, I, I didn't even really know what a PLN was. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I do, and I'm like so connected to the Teach Better family and, and all that, like I do not even want to live without one now, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my bucket list is I want to meet air, all of these people. Yeah. In the day. That is like top of my bucket list. Hey everyone, it's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm actually um, just had a long day and I usually don't, record uh, late at night but um, just having a moment and I was just thinking about some stuff and uh, looking at some things and I just kind of wanted to share maybe I don't know if it's a year-end message to you all um, this could be my last podcast that I'm recording for the year 2020 and I I just wanted to share just a something that just kind of happened to me the other day that I, I thought it was kind of weird and, and different for me. Um, I was actually um, out for a run and I was having a run and I've been, and if you've been following me, uh, connect with me, I've been really trying to focus on my health this year and lots of up and down, but I'm, I'm finally feel like I'm starting to see some progress and, you know, starting to get at a place where I'm, I'm happy and I, I finished a run. I have a goal of steps that I want to do every day and I surpassed the goal and I felt good. And I felt good for doing it. And the weird thing that happened was I just said, when I finished, I'm proud of you. Now there's no one else in the room. There's no one within a hundred feet of me. I just said, I'm proud of you. And I don't say that to myself ever. I, I say it to other people. In fact, I am happy to say it to other people, you know, in situations where I see something awesome happen, or I see some like tremendous growth, but I don't say it to myself. And I share this with you, not because I'm actually looking for you to reaffirm that in any way, to be honest with you. I share that because do you do that yourself? Do you take that time to just say, you know, I'm proud of you to yourself and look in the mirror and think about what you've done. Think about this year. And it's not about you, but I have a goal that I'm, I'm trying to achieve. I'm not there yet and I haven't achieved it. And I'm proud of the progress. I'm proud of just kind of continuing to push on days when it's really tough and i think about all the educators out there having a really tough year and i've read so many stories had so many great conversations on the podcast this year and it's not about like you did this amazing thing and you wrote this book or you started this new thing it's for some of you and it's totally fine and i think for some days it's the same thing for me it's just getting through the day uh, where you feel overwhelmed, where we have so many other responsibilities that we get through. And I think it's important to just stop and say, I'm proud of you to yourself because you would give that to other people, no problem. You would praise other people for doing that. And we are so hard on ourselves when we, we have an expectation of what we can do. And I was talking to some people today and was thinking about as I was recording some of these podcasts for 2021. And I said this, that 
We often give our best advice away to others for free, but we don't take it ourselves. We, we hold ourselves to standards and expectations that almost sometimes seem impossible to live in, but we don't take a step back and focus on like, what have we done? What have we become through this process? And I think just saying, I'm proud of you and saying in an authentic manner to yourself and looking at what did you do this year? And I don't know what your achievements are. I don't know what you did, but I know that you're here and you're listening to this. I know you're taking time out of your day to do this. And I think about a lot of friends that may have lost someone close to them and really struggled in watching them grow and deal with that and showing up and helping others and something to be pretty proud of. I see all the educators just going through really tough conditions and kids smiling and happy, even though school is nothing like it was last year and so many people are creating that experience it's not to say there's no bad stuff right like i don't want to get in this whole like well you're not acknowledging yeah everyone knows it's bad but i'm i'm talking about are you taking that time for just to appreciate what you've done to appreciate where you are in this moment and i hope that next year at the end of next year i don't know what it's going to look like nobody does like I thought this was a two week thing and uh, I don't know, but I just want to know that I'm going to still progress, and grow. And I think that's what the whole plan is for what we do in teaching and learning, what we do in education. It's not about getting to an end point. It's about growing and, and developing as we go, but understand that you can continue to grow there's no end to this but you gotta stop and just take a moment and appreciate and it was just as i said earlier it was just so weird that i don't know why what happened in that moment that i just stopped and said that to myself but i needed it i needed to acknowledge that i've been working hard i've been trying to get better i'm trying to grow and i still gotta go and so just think about having that conversation with yourself, looking at all the things you've done in probably crappy circumstances and just appreciate it, whatever it is. And just have that moment to maybe say, I'm proud of you and talk to yourself. I hope you have a great rest of your year. I hope you have a, a nice break and I hope you just have some time away from education, and from whatever, or to be honest with you, maybe you have time with it, whatever you need that will fill your bucket to end the year and, and hopefully start off the next one right. Uh, I would say I'm proud of you, but I, I don't know who's listening to this. I'm sure you're doing great things. And it's not about me saying it to you. It's about you saying it yourself. I just want you to think about and take that moment. So thanks for listening. And to all the people that have listened throughout the year, this is my first year doing this and uh, I've learned a lot. Hopefully I'm getting better at it, but thanks for being here and thanks for all you do for kids. Take care. Bye. But like the budget thing, like trying to apply leadership to the things we're managing, like it just kept coming up all the time. Like, can I, I want to try this. Do we have money for that? And so often it's like, well, not really like, or gosh, we're going to have to either ask the PTA or try for a grant. And that just didn't seem to be an effective way to like live out your priorities. So one year we tried, we like created a small line item and just shifted funds around. So obviously we've reprioritized the budget, but, but it gave us a small, a modest line item for innovation and the mindset change that that allowed us to do. So then as teachers are coming up to me, um, the answer was, it was a completely different conversation. Like, oh, we could tap into this or, oh, with either like part of the building allocation or your grade level or department allocation, pairing that, you know, if it's a priority for us and for you, pairing that with our in innovation budget, we might be able to do X, Y, or Z. And it just opened up so many different things. And it actually grew. Um, here's a, the next iteration. Since, since that book, what we did to that, George, is I was noticing that a lot of people tapped into that but not everyone, because some people are just high flying, cruising, 
or don't have the time or don't maybe right. don't feel comfortable asking like whatever the barrier so then we started this like it's called a grant but it tapped into that budget like one sentence grant give me a mm -hmm. sentence with what you want to do for kids and you know obviously it'll connect to like what what our vision and, and, and who we are but we will like mobilize it and we will try to fund it and work with you so that was a way to like break down the walls to the budget because a lot of school budgets are kind of mysterious. I think to teachers, they're not mm, super right. transparent and they're just they're just something that's there. Um, but that was that the response to that, like the first year we had several requests, the year after, the year after, it was just like people asking for really incredible, impactful stuff. And if I'm being like super reflective on it, a lot of what they asked for might have been stuff that I might have tried to hope to talk people into or say, right. hey, we should pay attention to it. But they, they know, like right. they just sometimes just need the, the support and the access. So, so that's the story, story behind the story. So for people listening, what, give me, and I'm putting you on the spot here, give me an example of like what a one sentence proposal was. Like, what would that look like? Oh, sure. I mean, it could range from, uh, you gotta books. say, you gotta say a sentence. What is it? Oh. Yeah. Um, someone, someone, I want this is why to, I'm asking this. Somebody I want, listening to this and they're like, I want to do that in my school. Yeah. 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 I need there's that. No, I need there's no, example. yeah. Yeah. There's no, and by the way, this is just how I am. Anyone listening, feel free to contact me and I'll even share the email that I send our staff and it'll lay it out for you. You know, oh, if you want to, if you want to look at it, but it's as basic as I want to provide book access to my kids because here's what I'm noticing, it, right. you know, solving a problem that they've noticed. It's like, all right, let's have that conversation. And it's so, so in using that example, like this wasn't just drones or robotics or coding software, although so, some of that stuff was a part of it, but it was right. also, you know, literacy and flexible furniture and, you know, the list goes, yeah, but the list goes on and on and on. And, and you and I have a very similar idea behind the notion of innovation. It's not about technology. It's about doing new and better teaching, right? Like it's, it's, and it, but it's really important. It has to be better. It just can't be cool stuff. Right. And I think that that's, that's important to me.